Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I'm gonna give you guys a deep dive on the new blog post released by the React team, which brings to us actually a lot of information about the new major release uh, React 19 that is probably going to come out either this year or at the beginning of next year, together with a lot of insight on the direction of which React is currently going through and a lot of insight on possible features that might come in the future and kind of the direction where React is going to. Now I'm going to break down everything that I read on the article. I think it was really insightful. Um, so stick around for that. And before we get into the video, if you could leave a like and subscribe, I would massively appreciate it because it would help push my videos to more people. And I would be eternally grateful if you could do so. So with that in mind, let's get into the video. Okay, so right off the bat, the first thing I want to talk about that was mentioned a lot in the blog post is the React compiler. So it used to be something that was just a research project within the React team uh, where they weren't actually planning on introducing it uh, in any of the major releases. But according to them, uh, currently React compiler powers the entirety of Instagram. So it is definitely working. Uh, we've been all been using Instagram. Um, and they said that they actually got uh, a lot of it done. And it we can be seeing it happening in the future release as well. So what React compiler is, is the idea It's the solution that the React team kind of provides. Uh, to preventing unnecessary re-renders in your components. So according to the React team, they believe that components in React are re-rendering too much. And a lot of times it is unnecessary. Uh, so only certain parts of the component should actually re-render, uh, maybe not the whole thing, maybe not all components. Um, so the solutions that we currently have right now are utilizing stuff like the use callback hook or the use memo hook, right? So memoization allows us to prevent unnecessary re-renders uh, in a variety of dis different situations. But according to the React team, and also according to my experience and everyone else's, uh, at least the people that I know, uh, it is kind of hard to use those hooks because a lot of the times developers uh, use it in wrong situations. Uh, they overuse those, the, the, those hooks and it ends up just making uh, the, comp the components have be too cluttered, the code being unreadable. Um, so there has to be a better solution for this. So what the React compiler does is it has as its core goal, uh, the aim to only re-render only the right parts of your components. So it is trying to uh, diminish the amount of times you have to manually memoize your stuff and do it all automatically. So the, the compiler attempts to detect code automatically that doesn't adhere or strictly follow React's or JavaScript rules. And it will either compile the code when it's safe or skip it when it's not safe. And I honestly believe this is a great change if it works as, as they are promoting it to, because it will definitely improve performance in a lot of projects uh, without the need of manually doing all that stuff. Preventing unnecessary renders automatically is a great thing. And um, to be honest, it might encourage people to use uh, strict mode and ESLint because you kind of need those two in order to have compatibility with the React compiler. So the second team they really talked about is the idea of actions, which is uh, a new feature for handling data submission from uh, the client to the server, extending beyond server actions to include client only applications. In its core, it will basically enable defining synchronous and asynchronous functions for form submission with React managing all of the lifecycle of those submissions. And the way they're going to do that is by actually introducing two new hooks that are going to be part of the core uh, React library. Uh, I haven't really tested obviously any of them, uh, but they look promising. Uh, I'm looking at the definition and I'm probably going to be putting it on, on the screen for you guys now. Uh, the first hook is called the use form status. So in order to use the use form status, all you need to do is first import the hook into your React component. And then you can basically get information about the status of that uh, server form you created. Its main purpose is to actually just give you status information uh, of the last form submission. So it can give you information like if the data of the form is pending, if the data has been sent, the method, the action, the data itself, and a lot more, um, which I think it will be probably be very useful, especially if you are going to have like forms and submitting data in your applications. Um, then the other one I'm looking here is the uh, use form state, which also seems to be kind of 
interesting. Um, it basically allows you to just update the state based on the result of the form action. So it's also a response to to the use form status hook as well. So you get the state of the thing and also the form action directly. And you can actually pass in a function and do whatever you want to that state uh, after the data is uh or fetched or updated or whatever the form is actually doing. Uh, on top of that, it seems like they are actually also uh, creating another one. As you can see, I'll probably put it on the screen as well. It's something called use optimistic. And this hook will be meant to basically just allow you to optimistically update the UI. It's crazy that they're creating a hook for that. Uh, it's obviously something that we've all done already with React in itself. Um, and it seems like they might make it a lot easier. I'll put on the screen some examples of it being used. Um, it seems like it might just make everything simpler. If you've created these hooks in the past, you might now just use the ones that are core to re the React library. Which is really interesting. Now, one thing they guaranteed is that right now this is available in the Canary channel, which, by the way, if you guys don't know, uh, React is now possible, like allowing us to um, test their new changes before they're actually done, uh, but also before they're uh, released in a stable release uh, by adding the Canary channel, which basically, uh, for those who don't know, previously React would test all their changes uh, internally. Now they just allow us to test them as well. Uh, obviously, I don't recommend using it in a, something that will go into production because it's not a stable release, but uh, it's really cool to actually try it out. I might try some of those changes and make videos about it, but uh, this specifically will be available in the next major release, which is the React 19 release, um, and it is currently available in Canary. Which now brings me to the next thing they announced, which is the Canary channel. Uh, a lot of companies have this, which is basically some sort of like version of their website or their their product, which isn't actually the full version because they're they haven't it's not in production yet, but it is something that they're testing. Um, and in this case, React is doing this to allow us to test everything before. Now, I think this is a great idea. Uh, apparently, I'm reading here uh, they are currently uh, releasing. Uh, Canary with uh, a couple of features, uh, including React server components, asset loading, document metadata, and act the actions feature. Um, and also, apparently, the integration of directives like use client and use server for full stack React frameworks uh, supporting rendering document metadata and enhanced resource loading using suspense, which is something we've already talked a bunch of times before. Um, now you can actually use all of that directly using Canary. And that's kind of like a way to also protect us from the next major release, because uh, what they announced is that the next release will have to be a major release exactly because of some of those features being uh, breaking changes. For example, asset loading and document metadata will cause breaks. For example, asset loading and document metadata will cause uh, websites and projects to break if you're not properly updated and not actually migrate everything correctly. So um, they are actually going to have a major release, you're going to have to update to react 19. And uh, it will fix all of that. But for now, you can access all of that in Canary. And that's basically all the changes uh, it ends with the article ends with them just saying that they will release react 19. So my expectation is either this year, are the beginning of next year. I'm really excited for this. I'll keep you guys updated every time there's any changes. Um, I'm also going to be making another video on the new hooks. I made it for React 18 as well, make it for React 19, a video on all the new hooks that are coming with this new version. If you're interested in checking out the vlog itself, I'm going to put it in the description below. I try to give it a brief summary of everything, but also give him my opinions. Um, I think this is a great direction. I feel like this is a lot of good changes um, and I'm excited to see what happens. But that's basically it. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. If you like it, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm going to be posting um, twice a week, hopefully. That's my new schedule. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time. Yeah.